<sighs> okay, so it's been about a week since live-action Avatar The Last Airbender has decided to grace our small screens and drop on Netflix, and I feel like that is enough time for the people that were going to watch this show to watch the show. And for the people that were on the fence, well, I imagine the dozens of reviews that came out literally the day of release has more than likely swayed your opinion in one way or another. So let's get some ground rules out of the way. One, the argument of, oh, this show or movie is so good or so bad if you don't compare and contrast every single element to the original source material, that is the most bloke argument of all time. Imagine your girlfriend or significant other telling you that she is going to make your favorite cheesecake from your mother's recipe, but then adds different ingredients and underbakes it. That's not the same cheesecake. It's a rather shite cheesecake. The better solution would be to call it your own recipe in order to avoid the scrutiny of others by comparing and contrasting to the original. But for the sake of this analogy, our girlfriend has no idea how to bake or even work an oven. So instructions are necessary, but are changes necessary to the recipe? No, not at all. And that's where I feel like my head is at when I watch this show. It's not like it was all bad, and while the reviews that I have seen so far would definitely have you believing different, I just watched Madam Web. I just watched Echo. Like, not everything can be the worst, because when everything is the worst, then nothing is. Netflix's live-action Avatar The Last Airbender, while, yes, is disappointing in pretty much every aspect of the original cartoon and a massive dump on the many lifelong fans of the show, but even worse, unlike shows like Velma or, say, She-Hulk, that went out of their way to break some type of imaginary wheel and were confident in their marketing that that was the goal of their respective shows. On the other hand, Netflix's live-action Avatar The Last Airbender was trying to be a serious show, a show that would actually grasp and demand the attention of a desperate and beaten audience from the endless amounts of mid-tier entertainment over the past half decade. But in their attempt to do something good for the community and put a product on screen that casuals and fans alike can triumph and champion for, they lost track of what Avatar The Last Airbender was even about. They missed the point completely. And it becomes painfully and relatively obvious that that was the case as the show progressed throughout season one. Let's just be frank here. We're looking at an incomplete, incoherent, and in some cases, Butchered character arcs, butchered character growth, and character motivations. Characters stripped of certain aspects or personality traits in order for the studio to set up superficial payoffs. An almost complete restructuring of the stakes within the show itself and how to display them properly, misplaced and jumbled together episodes that lead to incredibly bad pacing issues, and all shoved down your throat with some of the worst hand-holding when it comes to writing and dialogue that I have seen in quite some time. You wouldn't think to yourself that a live-action adaptation of what most would label as a cartoon would be more childish and in-your-face than the original, a style of writing that really hurts this live-action adaptation's delivery, context, and nuance. And trust me, it hurts me to say these words, especially coming from a studio that just produced one of the best products to hit our screens last year with their live-action adaptation of One Piece. Obviously, from a personal point of view, I am way more invested in the story, the characters, the world, and the masterpiece that was and still is Avatar The Last Airbender. So trust me, this review gives me no joy. And while it might feel disingenuous right now to not have a discussion or a certain section of the video dedicated to the plot, I'm simply basing the entirety of this video assuming that you, the viewer, have seen both the original animated cartoon as well as the live action adaptation. I'm sorry to everyone in the future, I just don't want to waste too much time right now because there is simply so much to say and I'm not a Maller type or the little platoon. True animals when it comes to their craft, but in order to not just sound like I am just some angry jaded fan at the fact that this adaptation didn't cater to me specifically, even though I don't really know who this adaptation catered to at all, in reality, it would take an entire video or pretty much an entire Twitter thread to really go through all of the changes when it comes to the plot in this disrespectful and disingenuous monster of an adaptation. But I will break it up into pros and cons as usual, aspects and changes that I did like, and aspects and changes that I didn't. Whew. We're gonna need a drink for this one. 
Let's just get into it, shall we? Okay, so Aang, Sokka, Iroh, the whole Kyoshi episode, so characters like Suki, and last but not least, Ozai. Generally, of course, in any type of media, you're going to have some hits and some misses when it comes to the characters. There's simply too many aspects involved to have hits across the board. That's what separates the top tiers from the A for effort group. And when it comes to the characters I just mentioned, for the most part, rather, it's because of the actors portraying the characters despite the changes in character motivations or growth, or if the studios and the writing room just actually didn't tamper with the character at all, or only in a minimal way. I still found myself relatively invested and immersed in their stories regardless. Obviously, while no characters with actual screen time in this adaptation is perfect, well, Iroh is like pretty close, but it's just a testament to how fantastic the original source material is. Some characters are just harder to mess up and character assassinate, I guess. I will say, just like when it came to the live action adaptation of One Piece, the world of Avatar itself is incredible, stunning even. The world, the environment, the clothing, the musical score, when it all comes to the world of Avatar, the team behind this adaptation didn't miss a beat. And while yes, there were certain times where it was relatively obvious that we were filming in a box or there was a big ass green screen thrown in my face, I was never taken out of the show overall. Never once was I watching this show and thought to myself, oh, well, that doesn't look like the world of Avatar The Last Airbender. Same thing when it came to the bending element of the show. I'm no pretender. It's been stated on my channel many, many times that I am not that bad when it comes to slamming CGI. I have no idea how hard it actually is to make bending look as good and believable as it already does. The bending in the elements themselves felt fluid and alive within the world. And while I'm not saying that the choreography was able to match that tone and feel that the elements in the bending itself was able to display, I had absolutely no problem when it came to the bending and the elements themselves. And I believe this adaptation displayed the power scaling properly and sheer raw nature of what it would be like to be a powerful enough bender to bend these elements. The problem is, is that I have no idea how they're going to be able to recreate or plan to follow up on some of the more, mm, aggressive bending scenes in the following seasons. But that is just one of the problems with an adaptation such as this. You can't have good aspects or good elements to a product that is copied from god tier source material. It doesn't advocate or incentivize new fans to go back and watch the original source material, like say with live action version of One Piece did, or it doesn't make returning fans, the fans that should have been getting catered to with this adaptation, to just remember what once was. It was extremely disappointing. But with that, we might as well rip the band-aid off and talk. Oh man, where do we even begin? I guess we'll just go big, and if we have time for the small, we'll go small. But for now, I guess we should just start off with our list of inconsistencies and unnecessary changes. Bear with me because you'll come to realize how quickly a small change, a small nick here and there, can spiral out of control to a point where the show you're trying to adapt becomes an unrecognizable shell of itself. And please, this is in no particular order. To me, this is all shit. So, why the hell did Aang not waterbend a sole time in this show? Are we absolutely brain dead? I can't even imagine the decision making that went on behind closed doors and the people that actually thought this was a good idea. This truly has to be one of the dumbest decisions in an adaptation, live action or otherwise, I have seen in the history of my life. Imagine not giving Luffy the devil fruit powers in the live action version of One Piece. I couldn't even believe my eyes. I was shocked. This is the Avatar. Like, what kind of a joke show is this? Why are Sokka and Katara in the spirit world? What the hell is even going on here? With just this one addition, you pretty much destroy the integrity and nuance of the spirit world, eradicate the character aspect of Uncle Iroh being a more spiritually bound character. They obviously misinterpreted the aspect of the Avatar being the bridge between our world and the spirit world, but okay. Why did Kiyoshi tell Aang about the Northern Water Tribe being destroyed? Again, it pretty much destroys the entire point of the journey of Team Avatar. 
the obvious answer. It's because we changed the entire situation and circumstances of how Aang found out he was the Avatar. Therefore, now you have to create artificial and frankly pretty hollow and in-your-face stakes for the characters because we don't know how to write a proper journey. What is this random Zuko Avatar book that was obviously just exposition dumps for our characters instead of, again, the writers just learning how to write a proper journey with our characters and the audience finding out about the world and what's at stake in a natural and organic way? Because I guess everybody watching this show is just five years old. Pretty much every single lesson that our young group of characters learn along the way of their journey have either been dismantled or tossed away completely. It's garbage tier in Toontown level shit. But I have already started to realize that I'm about to go on on a tangent, so we gotta start rapid firing these problems. Why is the owl from season two making an appearance in season one? Why is Ko a completely different character? What the hell is that Secret Lovers episode, and what wise bloke thought it was a good decision to remove the Aang and Katara romance subplot? Why the hell would you even cast these actors with this type of age difference unless you knew that you were going to remove a key element to these characters? Like, these characters get married in the future. They have kids. Again, it is disingenuous. I guess the summer solstice just doesn't matter anymore. Aang mentions to Katara that the airbenders were, I quote, scared of him and this is before he was announced as the avatar like what's even the point of adding that element to his character suki wanted to leave kiyoshi island for some reason i don't know why that was added and then we just got a bunch of little things like admiral zhao's death the team behind this project obviously did not watch the legend of korra grand grand giving katara the water scroll bye bye one of the best episodes in the entirety of the series with the storm Azula is in the show for literally no reason whatsoever. Like, they wrote, they, they wrote it that she was Zhao's ally and that she con and that she conquered a monster. <laughs> it's just so dumb. For the lot of you that are still here, my point in all of that is to reiterate my biggest problem with Netflix's live-action adaptation of Avatar The Last Airbender. It's the fact that we missed the point. In every single aspect of the show, rather it was pertaining to the characters, the story, the journey, the lessons, the world, or the stakes. Instead of going right, the studio and the people involved decided to make dramatic left turns at every opportunity they got creating a hollow and insignificant version of the very entity that they were trying to adapt. Azula having red fire, Aang not waterbending. These are crucial elements of the show and these characters that were taken away from them, all because the writers wanted to create artificial payoffs from setups that should have never been removed, basically removing elements from a show so they can give themselves a pat on the back in the future. It's disgusting and feels like a spit in the face to the fans of the source material. And while yes, I mentioned that I am not that much of a slanderous person when it comes to the CGI, especially if it's actually good, just not perfect, that is not the case when it comes to the acting. We have all day, multiple takes when it comes to the actor's deliveries, mannerisms, and command. But my goodness, the acting in this show was atrocious. Don't get me wrong, I do feel bad saying that. But there are times where you are invested in the moment or invested in a scene, but you're immediately pulled out because of the terrible dialogue and delivery, and you just can't help yourself but feel disappointed about what you're taking in. I honestly understand that everybody was trying to do their best, but some did their best more than others. At the end of the day, this is probably one of the most disappointing pieces of entertainment that we have gotten as a collective audience in quite some time. The decline of the MCU has been gradual and not as impactful. The DCEU was never even able to get their feet off the ground. The Disney Star Wars sequel trilogy is kind of a good comp, actually. Both products coming from extremely esteemed and fan-built franchises, only to be met with, I don't want to say assassinated and go that far, but definitely butchered characters, unnecessary and disingenuous plots, stories, world, and character changes, pacing issues, writers that don't know their head from their own ass searching for superficial validation of their crappy work, dialogue choices that are a slap in the face for anyone that has a comprehension level of above a four-year-old, 
and frankly, an adaptation that completely missed the point of the source material it was trying to adapt in all forms and aspects when it comes to how to write, manage, and create a coherent and incredible piece of media. It was bound to happen. We had our hopes, and now we have our reality. But never forget, no one will ever be able to take away the absolute masterpiece that was the original Avatar The Last Airbender. Never stop recommending it, never stop watching it, and remember, always champion what was and is forever great. Of course, as always, I want to thank you guys for watching the video, and if you enjoyed, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. I should say follow me on Twitter. I started a whole new account for this channel, so I'm going to start promoting that more. Again, I want to thank you guys for watching the video. This was an extremely depressing video, but we got through it. Make sure to like and subscribe. If you did enjoy, why not click on more while you're at it? Otherwise, that's all the words I got for you today. Bye.